Now, you have a very fascinating story, Tobias. You are approximately 30 years of age. You're male. Uh, your business partners are also male. Yeah. Uh, none of you have got children between you, yet you've entered into the baby food business. That's true. Um, maybe just tell me where this all began. Uh, well, um, one of my co-founders and me, we worked together at our own company. And um, back then, we always were into food. We uh, talked a lot about food and this... Uh, Who one... isn't? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just one day we, we decided to do a vegan month because we saw a documentary in television about veganism and we said, now we're going to eat vegan for one month. And that was purely just to test you and your health and if you could manage to eat vegan exactly, yeah. easily. Exactly, okay. um, We stopped after that month, but we tried for one month and it was quite good, actually. Was it but easy just to eat vegan all day long? No, not at all. Uh, it was quite tough. Um, the, the toughest part was that where our old office was, the only... A uh, place where we can get some lunch was a gas station. So uh, we could go for spaghetti carbonara for the microwave or um, spaghetti bolognese for the microwave. And uh, I had to li uh, read a lot of ingredient lists in that, that month. So is it vegan, is it not? And uh, none of it was. So, um, but I found out that most of the food I'm actually consuming every day has too much salt or sugar or some E numbers that I don't understand. And um, then we figured, what is probably the most healthy food category there is? And we said, it must be baby food. So uh, we went to the baby food shelf, look on me uh, back then, and we looked at those products. Uh, it's actually glasses like you have them displayed here. So um, we looked at the product and we said, why? Why is it shelf stable for five years? Uh, why is there sugar in it? Uh, every pediatrician would say that's not good. Um, so I asked another friend of mine, uh, Jose, and he's uh, a good friend of mine for already, I don't know, 12 years or something. And he's a food scientist and he told me, well, you know, this industry has not changed in 60 years and it will never change. And that kind of triggered me because when I hear something like it has never changed, it's impossible, I find it interesting to, to have a close look at it. And then look at me, we went back to the office, we would keep on uh, doing our old job. And then one day we just said, let's do it now or never. And we were both, back then, uh, I was not even 30. And uh, I said, when I don't do something myself now, I will never do it, probably. Great story. Yeah. Now, talk about your audience, because I'm a mother myself. And I wish you were around when my children were very <laughs> small, because I found those jars to be horrendous. In fact, I had to travel through security once with one at the airport with yeah. one of those jars. And to allow it to go through, I had to taste it. My child was asleep. Oh, really? I was like, no, I'm not trying it. No, don't be silly. I'm not trying <laughs> it. But you're exactly right that, you know, somehow that link between if if it's good enough for me, it should be good enough for my child and vice versa. Um, so just tell me about your audience now. Um, are you based in Switzerland or yes. in other markets? We are based in Switzerland, so we are, have our office in Zug. Um, that's because I live in Lucerne, my two co-founders live in Zurich, so we went for Zug, it's in the middle. Um, we produce in Switzerland. We are actually the only baby food producer producing in Switzerland. Uh, we source our products as local as possible. Um, so, for example, our carrots are from the, from the Bern region, our apples are from the Bodensee region, from Torgau. Um, the only things that we don't get locally is mango and banana, and that we source fair trade, because we say, if we don't can have it here, we need to make sure that it is fair in some, some sort. It's a great idea. Um, in terms of the process and the manufacturing and the packaging, there's, I mean, yep. loads of different areas you have to bring together. Uh, is it profitable at the end of the day? Is this why the industry hadn't evolved? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, when you look at the current products that you find in the market, they're all heat sterilized. So that's why they taste like they taste. So one of those glasses that goes through 120 cel uh, gray, uh, degrees Celsius of heat sterilization, this heat sterilization kills all uh, bacteria, but also the vitamins. And taste and color is also altered in a very negative way. That's why it tastes like it tastes. We, on the other hand, we use high pressure. So we use a very new technology called high pressure pasteurization. It's commonly used for fruit juices, but we um, take it for baby food now. We were actually the first to do this in, in Europe like this. And um, in the end, our products are a bit more expensive, I'd say for example, 50 rappen more per, per jar, but it's worth it because it's healthy, it's organic and it's fresh. It tastes as if it was just homemade. And I've got one here and, in fact, it looks so good that I would eat it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so this little guy, uh, this is the mango number five, uh, how much would that be 
on so, average? So, for example, in Switzerland, this would be three francs ninety. Um, if you order it in a subscription at our homepage, um, it will be a little bit uh, less expensive, let's say. Mm. In Germany, it's roughly two uh, euros forty-five. When I'm not correct, and which is not bad when you consider, you know, some of the pre-prepared fruit that's cut up for you, for example, could be five francs just for a little thing of mango. Exactly. Uh, obviously, a lot of parents spend a lot of time at home preparing food yeah. organically, naturally for their children. Um, and in terms of how you get these products and how long they last, uh, tell me about that side of the business. So um, for Yamo is a fresh product, so uh, it has to be cooled, so like a yogurt. Um, that means our shelf life is in the end not as high as maybe for a heat sterilized product because we are not ambient. And, uh, but still, we have roughly five weeks when you go shopping uh, at um, a retailer and find our product. It's, you will still have five weeks. It's basically like a yogurt. And yeah. you also have the online subscription, which works yeah. in a similar way that you have your vegetables delivered or, or exactly. ingredients for a course. Um, and how popular is that? Uh, very popular. So our uh, biggest part of our customer base and revenue comes from our online subscription. We were actually also the first to have an online baby food subscription. It's something that is people don't look for it, so we have to uh, we have to tell them about it. But and how do you make that promotion? How do you advertise? Uh, we use social media is very important for us. Um, so we have a big following in uh, in social media. Uh, people that just like what we are doing and spread the word because uh, word of mouth is is absolutely important, for, especially for a product that needs a lot of trust. And in the test phase of the products, you have to test it on babies? Uh, yes, we actually, we had always, we had a, a group of mothers and, and with their kids and their dads. Mostly the dads will be a bit of absent during this topic. <laughs> um, and we had a group of uh, roughly 30 young mothers with their kids and they were our uh, Yamo expert club, we called them. And they always tried new recipes and uh, filled out some questionnaire saying us, uh, this is too sour or too sweet or whatever. And the babies themselves, could you see a reaction? It was a bit difficult because what we learned is that if a baby eats something on one day, it does not mean that it eats it the other day. It's yeah, they're a bit... not very consistent. That's yeah, true. <laughs> that's true. But in general, um, it's very funny. Most of the babies, they eat it right on the first spoon because it's just really tasty. So. You mentioned something a little bit sexist there. You said the dads are not really into the nutrition topic. Yeah. In your existence um, of the company, of your research work before you started, have you found that culture shifting a little bit? Uh, I would love to say yes, but it's not the case. So our initial... Uh... Which is interesting given that I would say, you know, a lot of the population is interested in food, going yeah. out to eat foodies, so-called foodies, and the yeah. fact that you tried this vegan experiment you would think that they would be more interested. Also, I, we also thought this. We thought that in the beginning that 20% of our customers will be male, uh, but I think it's 5%. And we also see it when we are at exhibitions or fairs. Uh, we will also, when, when there is a, when a man approaching our stand, we will ask him, do you want to try? And he will try and we say, wow, that's really good. And then we said, why don't you uh, buy a test box? And he would say, I've got to ask my wife about this. <laughs> and it's always happened. So maybe, um, the man is not really the uh, deciding person. Yeah, we maybe have a bit of work to do there. Yeah. My husband, for example, was interested in my nutrition when I was carrying the okay, child, yeah. but when the child is, was here, and even now, he'll call me, you know, what's he having for dinner? See? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you sort it out. You know. Exactly. But are people, um, I guess they like the culture of the firm as well, the fact that you're young guys, you don't have kids, it is about the nutrition, it's kind of a cool product. You even name your products after... Uh, pop songs or, or movies of your era, yeah. which yeah. is fantastic. Um, how, how are you received as, as the company culture? I think in the beginning, a lot of people ask us, why free, free men? Why don't, you don't have kids. But then they say, well, that's, that's great. Why Two you... would be acceptable, but three men yeah, exactly. sort of complicates it somewhat. <laughs> the, the next question is, how, why has never anybody else came up with that idea? It's great, because as you said before, um, most of the women tell us, oh, you should have been there when I had a, a kid in that age. And this is entrepreneurship at its best, that you've really spotted an opportunity that's not being done, and that's so hard to come by yeah. uh, in this day and age, that really it was such an obvious one that you went in there and found a solution. In terms of manufacturing and, and the process and actually finding the packaging, um, are you looking at, I guess that's a, a topic for you in terms of hygiene and regulations. Yeah. 
um, probably a steep learning curve for you, I should imagine. Absolutely. So um, I think baby food is one of the most regulated food categories there is. So we had to do a lot of reading up. Uh, fortunately, my co-founder, uh, Jose, who is a food scientist, knew already quite something about it. And then he had a lot of professors from his university that helped him. Um, and I think it was our luck that we could start on a total uh, clean slate. We did not have any legacy behind us that we had to uh, work around it. So we just had those rules and we had to follow the rules. It was quite easy. I mean, a lot of people ask us, but yeah, this product is cool. It's very, uh, it's very expensive to ship it and very uh, delicate. And we always have to say the same thing. We always had a cool product, so we never had to rethink something. We just fought it in the beginning. So mm -hmm. it makes it maybe easier. And I noticed easier. on your product, you do have the, the Swiss sort of branding. Yeah. Does that play a big role, I should imagine, going across borders where you do associate Switzerland with quality? Absolutely, um, it does. In two ways. In one way, uh, Swiss quality, I think, is always perceived as very good. On the other hand, it's also ex perceived as expensive. So now for the EU, we will start producing in Germany, actually, um, to have a local product, which I think is more important to be local than Swiss. So in Germany, we will have this regional approach as well as in Switzerland. And that seems to be a theme with restaurant menus, for example, where they really use the local produce, yep. that they know it's really from farm to table sort of thing. And exactly. that concept is, seems to be filtering through even with the, the baby foods. I think that's something that um, nowadays customers, especially millennial parents, they really want this. And they want to know where is this coming from? Uh, what's the story behind it? Is this uh, did, what natural products? So for example, we don't use any additives whatsoever. It's just plain, in this case, mango, banana and apple. And you're a millennial, so tell yeah. me how you're using technology in your business as well and what the future is. Could you imagine that you use blockchain to be transparent about where that specific apple from your product has come from? We were actually already once approached by a company uh, doing exactly this and I think it's very interesting. I don't think it's right now because we have thousands of things on our plate right now, but why not in two years? Uh, because technology is evolving so fast and we have to keep up with it. And you plan to continue with this uh, business, not that you're a serial entrepreneur, you really feel that this is your heart, your passion. And, yeah. and just tell me a little bit about uh, employees, uh, how many you are now or... Um, so, how many uh, products a day you sell, for example, or uh, manufacture? Last week we were... Um, 12 people, now we are 14. <laughs> last year we were... a big jump. Yeah, last year we were four at that time, and now we're 14. Yeah. And I think by the end of the year we will be roughly 15 or 16 maybe. Um, I can't tell you how much we produce actually per day, but I know that when we produce once, it is roughly a couple of thousand, like 5,000, and we produce several times a week, and so, yeah. And do you have to do a lot of convincing when it comes to trying to put your products on the shelf in the gas station, for example? Um, we had a bit of luck because we were approached by um, DM and Cope. They approached us because they told us uh, they're interested in the most innovative product on the market. And we, since we were the first and, uh, our, the, let's say, biggest, we are still very small, but uh, the biggest in that sector, they asked us. And we are very lucky about this because uh, usually you have to go and ask all the retailers, sorry, can I be you in your shelf? And can you imagine that one day you'll be bought by a bigger brand or...? I don't know, I haven't thought about this yet, but um, who knows what the future brings. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of just speaking about the future and uh, the three of you, um, have, you, have you got more ideas in the pipeline? Yeah, actually our vision is, um, is really growing together with our customers. So we grow as a company, but also our customers grow. So the ones that are babies now will be toddlers tomorrow and will be teens somewhere. And we want to accompany them and uh, want to produce and create products that are healthy and fresh uh, or, or just made differently than what you're used to and uh, make something for kids up to 12 years, for example. I think there's so many different categories where you still can innovate and do stuff differently. I think you're right, moving on to the next phase of the child's life where it only wants to eat fish sticks and chicken yeah. nuggets. There's lots of work to do there. Yeah. So <laughs> you're going to be pretty busy. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> and the whole thing hasn't put you off children? 
no, absolutely not. I would love to have children one day, but uh, I think right now it would be, I would have not that much time for it. Yeah. I got married though last year, so oh, first step is done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that second step comes quicker than you think. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, seriously speaking, that it is the decade where everything happens, career, family, yeah. potentially. So, but I wish you every success. It sounds like a fantastic concept and uh, lots of uh, future success as well and lots of healthy children. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you, Amanda. You.